Good morning, good morning, and good morning again. Thank you once again for joining us here at Unfeigned Faith Ministries, where Pastor Lee Rodman is our pastor, and of course, the lovely Lakeisha Rodman, our first lady. Amen. We know there's many places that uh, you could be this morning, but as always, we thank you for spending this time with us and to hear a good word this, this morning on Word Sunday. As we get ourselves settled, let's go ahead and for prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for your blessings, Lord. Thank you for all the wonderful things you do for us each and every day, Lord. Lord, for those who are joining us this morning, Lord, we pray for them, Lord, that uh, a word today would be fulfilling to their soul this morning, Lord, and it'd be uplifting for someone this morning, Lord. Whether they're here or connecting over the airwaves and the internet, whatever it may be, Lord, I just pray and thank you and ask that you bless them, Lord, and help them go through whatever they're going through, whatever struggles they're facing this morning, Lord. In the name of Jesus, thank you. Amen. 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 All right. Up next, we're going to have the scripture reading this morning. Um, it's going to be out of John this morning. It's going to be John 3. John 3 this morning. And we're going to have the, the wonderful Minister Irons come up and read our scripture this morning. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today's scripture is going to be John 3, verses 12 through 16. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. 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 Oh, Amen. Man, what a wonderful scripture. Amen. Amen. Praise him. All right, up next, we're going to have our first lady, the wonderful Lakeisha Rodman, uh, come present uh, the announcements. Praise Amen. Amen. I don't see some things happening. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us for Word Sunday. Amen. Amen. I would like to just go over a few announcements right now. Okay, the first announcement is you can also find us here. For Bible Thursdays at 7 o'clock p.m. and that is Eastern Standard Time and you can find us on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Also if you have not done so please go out and take a look at our website which is ufministries.org. Amen? Amen. Amen. And also we would like to invite each and every one of you to join us for our TV broadcast. And you can find us on, at, on Tuesdays from 9 to 9.30 p.m. And on Fridays from 7.30 to 8 o'clock a.m. And those service providers are Comcast, channels 230 and 1018, Spectrum, Time Warner, channels 1230, Wow, channel 131, Digital TV, 18.1, 18.2, and 18.3. And also that website, um, for the Christian Television Network is ctnonline.com. And you can also download the church app and all the information is located there. You can download the church app. Um, if you have a Android, you can download it with Google Play. And of, of course, if you have an iPhone, you can download that with the app store. Again, I'd just like to just thank you, thank you, thank you again for our Word Sunday and we will see you on Thursday. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, First Lady. Wow. And again, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us today. For those who are the first time uh, visitors or joining us online, uh, we appreciate you taking the time uh, to listen to us this morning. Uh, I know there's a lot of things going on in the world and the news uh, and around you right now, but um, just let's take this moment to thank the Lord for everything that he's done and you know, just focus on him today. Amen. 
All right, our next selection is going to be uh, a praise and worship. How great is our God, correct? How great is our God, amen. Hey, I know I like y'all, y'all like the jam out there. We're going to do a little bit of something right here. God, we are nothing, and with his mighty power, we can achieve any and all things. Amen? So with no further ado, we're going to let, uh, I'm going to step aside and let the minister uh, be this, take, the, take the lead and uh, give the good word for this morning. Amen? So without any further ado, our minister, Minister Lee Rodman. Amen?
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God. Lord God, I ask right now that you rest in this place, Lord. Touch every heart, Lord, every listener, God. Lord God, I ask right now, God, that you just renew in us the right spirit, God, that we be able to please you, Father God. Lord God, I ask that you anoint me, Lord God. Bless me, Lord, as I attempt to be a vessel for you on this morning, God. Lord God, I pray that I only say those things that please you, God, those things that edify your people, God. Lord God, I lift uh, you up right now, God. We magnify you, God. Lord God, you've been truly been good to us, God. You've been a great God. You've been wonderful. Lord God, we can't really describe how wonderful you are to us, Lord God. And Father, we thank you right now. We ask you to forgive us of all our wrong, Lord God. Those things we know of and the things that we know not of, Lord God. Father God, we ask that you reveal it to us, Lord God, that we may make you happy, Lord God, make you pleased. Lord God, we come against every evil device, every evil thing right now, God. Lord God, we come against every hopeless um, person right now, God. Hopeless spirit, God, that calls us, Lord God, not to enjoy the blessings that you've given us, Lord God. The gift in Christ Jesus, Father God. Father God, these things we ask, we say in Jesus' name, amen. you guys I see some uh, different things this morning so I'm concerned uh, a little bit but I'm going to trust my uh, the people here to help us uh, in the Lord today and so I'm going to um, first of all thank God for being here again thank God for all of you thank God for the ministers that's in place even the minister of media and you out there uh, that um, you know uh, thought of enough of us to join us right now and uh, and share also the information uh, with your loved ones and the, your friends. And so, uh, as Pastor Rodman here, I appreciate that uh, from you on behalf of Unfeigned Faith Ministries. And so, um, I thank God for you. And I'm also aware that there's many of you that that uh, come out faithfully. And so, you're kind of familiar with the the uh, the way I at least uh, present the word according to how I received it from God. And uh, I just want to encourage you and let you know I will only discuss topics and things that uh, I feel that um, is right for you. <laughs> All right. Uh, and so I thank God uh, again uh, for being here. I thank God for my wife and my family for taking care of us. And I know a lot of you out there, you're happy because the election is over, right? Uh, at, at one point, it gets to the point where you don't care who wins, just tired of hearing about it. You know that. By the way, we, we know there's still more to come with that, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm done with it. And so we're going to move on and do what we uh, have been doing uh, even before the election. We, we, uh, we that are in Christ, we focus on him. He is our redeemer, our savior. He is the one that we are striving to be like. Uh, we, uh, we are trying to be disciples, move from believing in him and actually doing what he asks us to do. That's a different commitment. That's a different level, a different call. And when we do that, we will experience the things that you're looking for. Uh, you can't experience it or fall from them. We have to be close to them. And so I've talked to you about some things. We talked about patience. We talked about receiving um, um, anything from God. And I told you that it was through on Thursday, through faith and patience. Uh, his his uh, faith uh, traveling buddy, patience. And a lot of people don't like that, so I'm going to continue with that on Thursday as well. There's more to it than that. Uh, but I want you to know that that is required of us. Um, faith requires patience. Uh, and so I think if we can understand uh, those things, uh, we wouldn't be so frustrated, disappointed, and, and hopeless in every case. Because faith looks beyond what's in front of you, looks ahead. And how many people really <laughs> should be sad of something? They don't even know what's coming. In other words, uh, our joy is in the future, in the faith of beyond this thing, and everybody ought to be happy. You don't have no reason to be sad yet. You haven't even seen the thing. And so anyway, uh, today I want to come to you. I think you've seen the topics um, out there. Um, and I, I titled this one, Receiving Christ Jesus. Um, I, I, that was purpose not to say Jesus Christ. Because there's a lot of believers out there, I know and understand, uh, we all at different levels 
uh, even just recently, I learned that even some of you listening, not sure about Jesus. And to be honest with you, if that's the case, that your, our faith is hinged off that very fact. If Jesus is not real, our faith is vain. And so for uh, this is more for that person, um, that child-like person, or that person in a stage of, of, that haven't reached them at least the mature level of knowing Christ and believing that he is, and not just that, uh, believing in him enough to follow him, we're going to talk about receiving him. We're going to talk about receiving him. And it's real simple. It's nothing complicated. We don't have a special service for you to receive him. And so I titled it Receiving Christ Jesus because I know there's some of you, uh, maybe not now, hopefully none that follow me, uh, that uh, believe that Christ is Jesus' last name. I ran across quite a few of them. And like I said, it's hard to believe in someone you don't know. All right. And you surely won't trust them. And so I'm, I'm coming to you slow because I want to make sure I cover all the bases so that when I start, you're not lost and confused. You know exactly where I'm coming from. Uh, the word of God is, is simple, really. Uh, all you'd have to do is believe. All right. And so anyway, receiving Christ Jesus is not as hard as you think. And so my subtitle, as you see, I, I, I put it, I say, like a child. Listen, all, all of us, that's, uh, definitely, if you're listening to me, you were a child at some point in the natural. You didn't just come out of the womb an adult. You didn't come out mature. And so we, we all can relate to that. You have baby pictures, some of you, that save them. You have babies right now. You see this all around you. So uh, when I said receiving Christ Jesus like a child, it ought not throw you. It just may sound funny. It's, it's funny to talk to you. And so the best that I can with the abilities that God has uh, granted me on today, uh, the mercies, uh, I'm going to try to talk about that a little bit. And I would suppose that this is the type of message you'd have uh, someone may give for Christmas. But I'm not real big on uh, uh, seasonal messages, <laughs> you know. And so Christ is really all year round, to be honest with you. Matter of fact, what you're going to do next, uh, next year or what you're planning to do now, you should have been doing it all year. You got it? Uh, Christ doesn't change because it's January 1st. You with me? And so as you can kind of understand, we're talking about receiving Christ and it ought to be a constant. Thing. This is a reminder here uh, as a minister of Christ Jesus. I'm just standing here in the gap on today to prepare you even for what you call Christmas uh, next month. All right. But anyway, uh, so I'm going to go forward. Now, listen, have you ever tried to give somebody something, someone something and they didn't appreciate it? I know out there I would like to see uh, some notices out there, at least uh, some uh, hearts or something, so I know that you can hear me out there. Uh, so uh, don't just, just hit a heart or get a, a uh, hit a check mark or something so I can see you respond at least to me, so I know you can hear me. But anyway, I think that everyone, whether you're responding or not, uh, that you ought to have uh, experienced this thing. Or you may have been that person that someone has given you, but I'm talking about Facebook as well. I'm talking about everything that I got running. And so anyway, um, uh, some of you have experienced that, and some of you feel that way right now, that you're giving all. Okay, I see something. Thank you. I need that. I need confirmation. I got you. And so anyway, uh, uh, some of you are doing, dealing with that right now. You got people in your homes that you're taking care of, and some of them won't even speak to you. They got the nerve to go around and use your things. You got it? So I think we can understand that. I don't have to go real far with it. You have been unappreciated, and uh, you, you should uh, have experienced that. And many of us that have experienced that should also have know that that doesn't feel real good. It doesn't feel good. It makes you feel some kind of way uh, in that way. And so anyway, I think uh, that is, uh, unless you're a child, a uh, very uh, young child, and you may not have experienced it, uh, everyone of a mature age should be at least not confused, should not be confused at this point. Well, uh, do not fret. You're, you weren't the only one uh, that this has happened to. Remember I told you Thursday I had you guys chatting a little thing uh, to say that, uh, tell somebody, ain't nothing new. Say it again. Ain't nothing new, ain't nothing new. happening to you. All right, so I know some people like the rhymes and funny things, uh, but the message is real simple and it's solid, and it is truly uh, true. So uh, it's not the first time, first time this has happened. And I want you to know that I want everybody now to go to John 1. Go to John 1, and we're going to deal with uh, a series of scriptures here, 
and we're going to talk about receiving Christ Jesus, yes, as a child, but we're also going to, re going to talk about this, uh, this behavior, this, uh, this attitude of uh, refusal. <laughs> you know, some people won't even listen to me because they, they, they don't want me to tell them anything, right? Uh, listen, uh, God has said in the scripture that his people perish from lack of knowledge. And you stop there. No, don't stop. Keep going. He said because they refuse, reject knowledge. He got it. And so the knowledge is available, but if you don't take the knowledge or accept that or receive it, if you will, uh, it won't do you much good. You got it. And so a lot of us are falling by the wayside and everything else and all kinds of sides. Because we have not really grasped or received uh, the gift and the things that God has given us. All right. And so anyway, I got you at John 1, starting at verse 11, um, and I'm going to take my time on it, and if we don't complete this, uh, we'll, we'll catch up on another time. All right. And so I got you at John 1, starting at verse 11. It said, he came unto his own, and we know that he is referring to our Christ Jesus, right? Our anointed one, the Savior, our Lord and Savior, our Master, that, that one, Right? He came into his own and his own received him not. Okay. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't receive it. All right. They reject them. They refuse them. Uh, in in uh, a lot of different words we can say. Uh, you guys can uh, say it a lot of ways, but uh, they weren't filling him. <laughs> you got it. So anyway, he came and uh, they rejected him. They, they received him not. Uh, but as many as received him, but those that did receive him, to them gave he power. Power. Sound like I'm popping in the mic. It's a power word. They gave them power, power to become the sons of God. And uh, this is new learning for some of you because when you think of son, you're thinking male, right? Uh, this word is children. It, it has the meaning of children. Matter of fact, the same word translated. And you have to take the context. Anyway, as many as received him, to them gave he power to, re to become the sons of God, children of God, even to them that believe on his name. All right? Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So we're talking about Christ Jesus. I'm talking to you about receiving him as a child. And we have scripture here to let you know and confirm that even him, Christ being good, weren't received of all, even his own. And I think we all know that even in your own household, you got scripture to tell you about a prop, whether a prophet is received or not. It seemed to be that the, the ones closest to us are not the ones that's really a grabbing hold. And so you have us out on the Internet and places like that. And, and if truth be told, a lot of ministries, especially small ministries, uh, you didn't really have a chance uh, it, without using this virtual environment. Because uh, if you set up a shop right outside, people pass you by. Some of them don't do anything, just hang out. And now it's a bad time now because even believers, many of them have withdrawn themselves from the fellowship. Uh, a lot of them have, re, uh, have withdrawn from receiving Christ and yielding their services. And we just want the virtual environment. And uh, being a teacher of the word, I use every tool, including the virtual. And so you're not going to get away from me. <laughs> if you don't come here, I'll come to you. You got it. And so as long as you got Internet, you got TV, uh, we'll find you, even radio. All right. But anyway, uh, so in this particular scenario, Jesus wasn't operating uh, as far as we know uh, via the Internet. Facebook didn't exist and there were some other things, uh, but he his ministry was right in your face, so to speak. And he showed up doing the things that God, the father, sent him and they didn't take him <laughs> too well. You got it. And so uh, that's a note for us uh, leaders and people out here. Uh, why would you think that everyone would receive you? If they received the ma didn't receive the master, uh, who are you, who are we, uh, that they should uh, give you more credit? All right. So anyway, uh, so we see that. Now listen, there's three reasons why people don't receive, why you don't receive, uh, why you may not even listen to this message. All right. Uh, but there's three reasons, and there's uh, maybe more, but this is based on what I uh, have seen, even in the Word. Uh, one of them, and you can jot this down if you're a minister, uh, you're going to have to build your, uh, you have to prepare yourself. Uh, that's, 
that's hinged off another message I heard. Uh, basically, uh, you know you have a calling, but you're not getting ready for it. You got it? And so the calling lets you know that there's a call coming, and then that means for you to start preparing, doing something. You got it? Well, there's three things, uh, uh, three reasons why people just don't receive. All right? And so one of them, the number one is unbelief. Uh, you think somebody might be fooling you. <laughs> they might be lying to you. They're joking. Uh, here we go. They're a host. <laughs> They're hypocritical. They're not talking the right thing. So unbelief underneath, no matter what your justification is, really, you don't believe enough to uh, receive. And so even today, if you uh, really feel that I'm just telling you these things and it's not scripturally based, uh, by right, you ought to question that. And you might uh, be able to uh, be justified. You'll be justified in not believing what I'm telling you. Uh, but don't worry. I made sure that it was in there before I came to you. But unbelief is one. And so there's some that haven't reached that level yet. You're not even believers yet. You're listening to believe, but you haven't actually become a believer. And then you that are believing right now, there's still more because you can believe more than what you already believe. You can become disciples and actually do uh, what you believe. All right. And so the second one is pride. That's another one. And you'll find that. Uh, this is all, these are all relevant when it comes to receiving because you're going to have to evaluate your own, your own self. Listen, some people have not even received uh, their answers to their prayers. Why? Because of their own selfishness, their own pride, their own haughtiness, their own uh, whatever, right? And so uh, there's uh, humility has to step in to help you with that. And don't worry, God knows how to humble us, right? But you have a part in it because you can choose whether to flare up and run out of the room and cut your internet off, or you can sit there and humble yourself and listen to it. At least listen, listen uh, to the end of the matter. All right. So anyway, we got uh, unbelief and we have pride. And whether you, no matter who you think you are, we all deal with these areas in our life. All right. About something. All right. So, uh, and the third one is shame. And so either way, pride and shame is connected because, um, like I said, you try to help and you try to do something for people and you have some that would take all even more than what you give them. <laughs> them cats are habitual takers. <laughs> they take everything. Some of them don't even need it. Right. But then you got some that could use it, really need it and reject it. And this is more so what I'm talking to you about is rejecting the, the stone. Uh, re, we're talking about rejecting Christ. We're talking about receiving Christ. All that is, is hand in hand. Uh, you can learn a thing by looking at the opposite. But anyway, these are three reasons why. So even while they rejected him, uh, these are the three uh, main um, elements that existed for them to even reject Christ. They didn't believe him, that he was Christ. And some of them were stuck in their own stiffness, their own uh, way. And some of them uh, really were jealous of Christ. And they were shameful that they could be, you could be in a service. You could be, uh, uh, even some of us, you could be, I did it for 20 years. You could be that person and somebody just coming to the door and God <laughs> acknowledge him and do something. He's not a respecter of person. But anyway, that's shame. Some of you won't say anything because you ought, you ought to have been further in this thing. But you kind of uh, been taking side steps. You haven't really fully committed, so you haven't grown to the level that you ought to grow. All right. And so that'll be some other topics. But anyway, I'm talking to you about receiving Jesus like a child, like a little one. Having childlike faith and wisdom, and I have to be to support that. And like I said, many of us have, have children, and we've been our children, and we kind of understand to some degree whether our parents have been there or not. We understand uh, a life of a child, at least uh, some of the uh, restrictions, uh, some of the freedoms. We can kind of understand and relate to that. You ought not be lost in that. So I want to ask everybody, have you ever wondered then why a child never refuses a gift? Okay, now you may have some rough ones, uh, and I've seen some terrible ones, even in school and everywhere. But I haven't run across one that if you're handing them some uh, good, that they will refuse it. <laughs> even if they act the funny, nah, nah, nah. You keep looking at that, looking at that child. At some point, that rascal was somehow. Even if you whip them, <laughs> you spank them, you discipline them. You some of you, you put them in the corner for two minutes. Even still, when they see that there's something that uh, has been given to them uh, that quite possibly uh, could uh, benefit them to some degree, 
their continents change and they get happy. You with me? And y'all got children. I think we know a couple of them. Yeah. And so anyway, uh, and we all been there, but you, but how many have examined it? Listen, experience is not the best teacher. Uh, evaluated experience is the best teacher. And so you've gone to this point, some of us 30, 40, 50 years uh, and higher, and you didn't evaluate your own childhood and, and your own attitude and things. You just, you just, 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 it just gone. But anyway, going back and look at it, just remember this. Uh, every child is happy to receive a good gift, right? And so when you have us, some of us that call ourselves adults and senior in this thing, and we're rejecting knowledge and wisdom and Christ and all these other things, uh, how does that work? And so anyway, uh, this is, uh, uh, is a mirror. This is a, a, a wonder right here. Why a child is able to receive a good gift regardless of any circumstance and be joyous, joyous and happy and yet some of us that have been given the greatest gift that any man could even uh, imagine and we're not happy <laughs> we're upset we're sad why it's not christmas yet what he gave us uh gave us his son it wasn't even on that day that you're about to dress up and send gifts on all right but either way, regardless of the day he sent it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't take away from the gift. The gift is the gift, no matter what day you pick. And the thing is, listen, this is the answer to that question. Why, why doesn't kid, why is a child able to receive and move on and get these things and be happy with good gifts? And here we go, y'all. Y'all ready, adults? You might want to grab your helmet, your seatbelt for this one. You ready? Here we go. They haven't grown up yet to be that stupid. You got it. So anyway, a child is young and they're uh, immature in their way. And of course, they're developing. They haven't grown up enough to be that stupid, to refuse a good gift. <laughs> and so that's something that can help you. There's other things and behavior that they do that you'd wonder and you try to correct them. But I tell you what, uh, if truth be told, many of us need a child to correct our attitude when it comes to Christ God giving you something. Uh, some of you don't even ain't even happy with the place you have to live in. Some of you are not happy with the car that you have. You're not happy with the job you got. You're not happy with the abilities that he gave you. You won't use it for his for his glory. You're not happy with that. Yet you're still looking for more. All right. And so even with your children and people that we have, if you don't honor the little thing or whatever you have, it affect it has a grave effect on what you are to receive. All right. And so anyway, we can learn from a child, have a childlike spirit when it comes to receiving Christ. So first of all, you got to recognize who he is. You got to honor what the gift is and you just got to take it. You got to know it's a good gift and I got it. And I told y'all about patience last week and I think I've seen some notes out there. You can say, mm, mm, good. All right. And so I got to be animated with you because I need you to understand. I got to come the way you are. Listen, you say um, um, good about some things. They're not even good gifts. All right. And so we have been given the greatest gift that you can even uh, imagine or even quantify to any degree in a human standpoint. And uh, yet uh, we still as believers don't even be happy. And so I, I got to go into it a little more. But anyway, I want you to, that, to stick with you. A child is uh, a great example of receiving because they haven't grown up. And learn that mess. <laughs> not yet. They have not learned to refuse a good gift. Anyway, they're not that stupid. All right. And so anyway, uh, we understand that. So not just that. Uh, they, they show wisdom in that. I have to say, take it, children. They give you a good gift. Grab hold of it. All right. So anyway, uh, listen. Uh, at the, at next time that you see and you're in this scenario, look at them. Don't just hand it off and run off. Observe the child. Observe the child and look at their continence when they actually receive something they don't know or not aware and they look at it. Look at the joy you can see. Well, what about you? How is it that we can run around as believers, even senior in this thing, even despite the election or COVID or whatever, and you can't find nothing to smile about? And what I'm saying to you, some of us need to revert back. So I think some of us need to turn in our titles. Let's start over again. Hey, it would be a good thing if God, even me, called us back and said, you know what? Uh, strip all titles, all apostles, all pastors, all these leaders. Uh, let's start back over again. 
Let's start this over so we can build up and learn and grow and mature like we're supposed to do. Our faith ought not be as a child, but some of us are still operating like a child. You ought to know that a good gift is good for you. And you ought to appreciate what you have because, it, especially when it comes to our Father, if he sees that you're not honoring what he already gave you, you can look out and not to even really expect, or I don't know how long it'll take for him to give you something else. You actually have to appreciate uh, what he gave you. All right. And so we kind of understand that. That's simple stuff, right? Uh, sometimes they just can't even contain themselves. You watch a kid so much, uh, whether it's Christmas or not, birthday, and they like this. They're like a little kid they say in a candy store. Uh, but what about us? <laughs> Listen, for you to wake up this morning and start moving your body, uh, even if you only got one arm, that's still a blessing. You got it? Because there's some won't wake up to even see tomorrow. Some won't last to the night, and it could be one of us, right? Tomorrow's not promised, so you got a reason even right now, regardless of the broadcast, to be glad because uh, you don't have to die lost if you're a believer. All right. And so now if you haven't accepted the Savior, that's another story, but you got time if you're listening to me. Uh, by the time this broadcast's over, you can uh, change that matter. All right. So anyway, uh, when you look at them, uh, even their joy is uncontainable. Sometimes you give them a gift and you want to whoop them. Hey, sit down. Don't do it. They take the gift, start throwing it around. I got a, a grandbaby. I tell you what, you give him something in your hand, you might want to be watching your glasses everywhere you don't know what may happen he might take it and throw it through the window anything but anyway it's is uh it's uh, inside of them and it is uh, it's, it's un uh, uh containable to them and this is how we ought to be you ought to be happy to be uh serving in this type of capacity because there's many that's not and there's many won't even ever do it and it's a great uh blessing just to do so all right so anyway, we are supposed to receive our Jesus just like children receive things, okay? And we can learn even more from children. Uh, you can spank them, but yet they know you love them. They don't hate you and start and say, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Not until, here we go, they grow up to be stupid enough to say that. And we know we run across some. They get to a certain age. I don't need you. I want to go. Stupid. You start getting to a point where you're growing up stupid. <laughs> it's not supposed to be that way. You're supposed to grow up wiser. And so we know that age is not by itself an uh, uh, indication of your wisdom. All right. And so I got to come back. I want you to go to Mark 10. Go to Mark 10. And we read uh, John. I had you read John 3.16. Uh, I think that's a common passage. You probably can find that on a poster. Right. Uh, but I like to dig into the word and find scriptures and pull out uh, information. That's, that's not common. It's not just common knowledge. You actually got to study to see or run across uh, some of these things and some of these angles that I come at you with. Uh, but there's many other ways. I only know what I get and receive, uh, but I can go back and learn more even from that. But anyway, Mark 10, uh, starting at verse 13, I want to uh, talk about a, a little bit more here. And then I, I know I got to try to dress it up for you and get out of here, right? I didn't sing a lot um, before you today because uh, surely uh, it's been inside of me to know that this is, we need to get this out. All right. So anyway, in other words, it ain't nothing for you to really sing about. <laughs> you don't know who you're singing to, you know. I got someone out there that don't even know they asked a question and that this is not to uh, belittle you because I know you're watching, but I'm using you as an example of what I'm trying to explain. Some of you don't even understand the Godhead. Listen, the Godhead is the word used in the King James, at least for sure, that is re uh, more um, uh, meanings family. It means like family, more than one, right? And, he, and, he, and Christ is a member of the Godhead. But you have God the Father, you have the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These are the three mentioned, and you ought to know that you can't receive a lot of this without joy. You can't, you can't receive with joy without knowing that. you got to know this. This got to be uh, settled in you. So it's three. I want you to know that what they say is one. Oh, yeah, that's in, uh, in uh, how they uh, relate to one another. There are three individuals, okay? And so uh, you'd have to throw out scriptures to take the other stance. Anyway, uh, what I'm saying to you is, as we hear, we're here in Mark 10, and you know that's one of the Gospels. Uh, and so I told you, when you see, some of you might have read writing. And I ask you to open your eyes wide and, and receive. So Mark 10, starting at verse 13, here we go. It says this. And they brought young children to him, him being Christ, Jesus, right? That he should touch them, and his disciples rebuke those that brought them. Uh, this is something big for me. I'm against you. If you stop a child from going to Jesus, 
And because you can't know Jesus if you thought, thought that he would hurt a child. And so you'd have to be using some other logic somewhere. But it's not based on what he's told you or nothing in this scripture. Listen, unless we are like children, you can't receive. Them. All right. So anyway, uh, and they brought young children to him that they should touch, that he should touch them. And his disciples, the closed ones, just like now, stopping people, getting in the way, stopping progress, gets in the way. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, worrying about how old they are and things like that. Oh, no, 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 you're not ready. Trying to evaluate uh, something that they're, they're beyond their uh, abilities. We are part of the head. Christ is the head with a body. We follow with the head, the instruction of the head. We did the body don't, the arm don't tell the mind <laughs> what to think. You got it. So anyway, we, this, is just, uh, this is just other meat for you, but uh, you got to understand what I'm trying to get to you here. You don't grow up to be stupid, all right? So anyway, uh, they brought them up. Uh, to him to be touched and the disciples rebuked them those that that brought them so the people that brought them in that knew that it was a good thing they rebuked them but but when jesus saw it our master here we go wide eyes he he was much displeased <laughs> oh my god listen in the english language we have to add other words adjectives and describe it of course you're translating a word from somewhere else but they had to put, they couldn't just say he was displeased. I was upset with it. No. He was much displeased. Some of you might say he was mad. I think some of you, the way you act, furious. <laughs> some of you are beside yourself. You're outside. You can't contain it. Whatever. Uh, we're talking about an uh, in, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's unexpressible, inexpressible type of um, feeling. But he was upset about that. So why would we ignore that? He was much displeased when they tried to stop him. And he said to them, look, suffer the little children. Allow the children to come unto me and forbid them not. Don't stop them. For such is the kingdom of God. That's what the kingdom is about is this. <laughs> oh, my God. And so anyway, he's trying to use them a natural understanding. We ought to know and you can stop them from going in your refrigerator, but you better not get in the way and stop them from going to the Savior. You got it? Because there's a greater reward than what you got in your refrigerator. You can restrict them from eating ice cream and candy that may hurt them, but you can't restrict them from receiving a Savior who is designed or was sent to uh, help them, was sent to be a gift to them so that they can achieve and receive from him. All right. And so I'm going to try myself not to get uh, disqualified here. All right. So we got Mark 10, 13, 14, and then we're going to 15. He said, verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, like a little child, he shall not enter in. These are absolute words. This is nothing for the minister to change around. If they don't, if you don't let the person, let them come and enjoy and receive this gift with gladness, you become a part of the problem because you're hindering them and you're going to have a problem because that soul, that life will be on your hands when your child get to the point and they don't even respect or receive the Savior because they ain't never known it anyway. Matter of fact, you didn't mandate it and every time when they wanted to do it, you stopped them because you come up with a natural reason not to let them let them praise them let them pray let them do the things let them hold the offering if that's the, the case uh, put the children involved because unless they enter in understand humility and understand the savior when they get old enough here we go to be stupid <laughs> when they get old enough to get stupid now uh, they may run and do another way and you see many of them all right and he took them up in his arm not just that he rebuked them for doing it and then he grabbed the kids so that the kids know now listen we are children we have been given the power to become the sons the children of God and you ought to know that your father love you and even if I scold you you should know that I'm just the under shepherd right now but the real father can go right back and twist that around you got it because he will reach down and grab you so Jesus took them up in his arms he showed them are closer he not only rebuked them in front of the children he also grabbed the children and he said this uh, uh and blessed them he grabbed the he, he he put his hands on them and blessed them oh my god listen you know that that's some of our problem right now we don't want to let our children go in and get blessed you you thinking you're the only one blessing them. where you think your blessing coming from listen they need a personal individual a connection with the father listen god said this in other scripture that they shall all know me 
It's going to be a time when you're not running around talking about know the Lord. He said, they all going to know me. Why? Because I'm going to put stuff in their heart. You got children born that you even prayed and asked God for. That once they come up and you don't know why they want to take this and that. Don't you know, just like Jesus, uh, we had to tell his uh, his earthly parents, uh, uh, pretty much, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, uh, I got to. I should be about my father business. <laughs> what are you talking about? You you trying to uh, cover me up and keep me from serving the Lord. I, I got to be about this. And I just want to say that when God, some of us have children that have been blessed, uh, even in the womb, before they come out, and they have this pull inside of them to do things just like you, and you stopping them. All right. And so I say if they're trying to do something for the Lord, get out of the way. All right. Anyway. So he took of them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. All right. So look, uh, we do not know really, and even me, I don't know to the full extent, really, even understand or perceive or realize or know what the Heavenly Father really gave us in Christ Jesus. We don't really have it because we talk salvation. Here's some things. Uh, we know he gave us Jesus, his son, right? Only begotten son. It say only begotten so we can understand the significance, not just one of the sons. <laughs> okay and this is something that i know i got to slide in because i got like a few minutes but listen jesus is not an angel to refer to him as an angel and put him on the same level you demote him for one not just that is a is dishonoring him matter of fact if you thought that you were gonna die and become an angel that's a demotion we was made in God's image. The part of the Godhead is a family. And the best I can describe it to you would be like your own children. They come out of you. That ain't like your cousin or somebody else. They actually is made up of what you made of. Christ is the son of God that was made flesh here, of course. For us, they go beyond a certain point that I feel they're beyond. And my mom, I ain't had to ask about that with her. <laughs> She had some other techniques. Uh, she used some other uh, tactics. If she felt that uh, I'm, I'm under, uh, can't contain myself with some things, uh, she ain't let me just get away with it. But the point is, what I'm saying is, uh, the issue with them, and this is on the good side of them, they, they're made this way. This is where they are. They are expressive souls. Uh, even my grandbaby uh, can't don't talk real well right now, meaning you can hear them and and things and of course the mother and father know more than what we and we have to really listen to him uh he's not able to express in words exactly you know at his level of what he's feeling and whatever but guess what he can do he can show you <laughs> i tell you what he can show you when he get a good gift and he also can show you when he's mad he can show you when he's sad when he's hungry and you also know when he's happy and so that ought to be like a child like with us i ought to be able to see uh, happiness in you because you have been given a gift that I didn't give you uh, it's a great gift a gift that we don't even know all the fullness of it and so this is what I want to say about children uh, you can't whip them all the time every time no it depends on the behavior and how far but either way understanding that they just expressing themselves right that don't mean they get away with everything but they are expressing them. they're expressive souls Anyway, and so refusal of a gift uh, in some places is like spitting in somebody's face. There's some people who start fighting you if you don't give them nothing. I learned to walk away now. <laughs> Listen, and I also learned that if I try to offer and help somebody, here we go. I'm driving down the road, I see somebody walking down the street. And I understand about being a good neighbor, and I've offered them rides. And get what they tell me? Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm looking at how far they got to go. It's even rain, uh, pride. Or they don't believe I'm really trying to give them a ride. Either way, refusing a good gift is stupid. All right. And so anyway, uh, that's just one thing and you know other things. All right. Uh, if they are uh, so refusing a good gift uh, is like spitting in someone's faith. And in some countries, it's war. We are all little children to God. I already told you that. All right. And so I got some uh, last nuggets to throw out so I can get out of your way. I just want to, uh, to some degree, get you thinking. I like to lead into the next thing I'm talking to you. You ain't caught it yet. I don't just talk to you about disconnected thoughts. But anyway, uh, we're talking about receiving Christ as a child. And then I got to bring this in to you. And I want to uh, put a note in you to plant a seed in you. I, when you go back and look at Adam and Eve, some of you don't even know this. First of all, you don't know how big they were. And you don't know how uh, old they were. And you don't know uh, even their color. You don't even know what language they were speaking. The point is, the, the first Adam, uh, as we know, uh, which is uh, uh, mankind, right? 
that's what that mean anyway that ain't a person name but in this case i'm talking about what you will refer to as the man adam all right anyway the first adam think about this he was formed um you know from the ground and listen he was not a child he did not god did not form him as a little baby and then next you know he he was raised with the apes and he grew up and he started naming people no he was formed at a level a mature uh, a level of maturity that we are not all right now listen this is what i want you to see the difference and we see some errors and mistakes in that and some things they've done right and we're man and we do something similar uh but jesus wasn't the case he didn't, uh, he didn't come, uh, you know, all of a sudden they found him at the tomb. Who is this? Oh, I'm Jesus. I'm here. He didn't come down as an adult. He came through the womb just like us, come out as a child. Here we go. And come out. Now, what, what more uh, example you need? He come out as a child, sub subject, put himself subject to the same things as we as a child, right? Even sometime being accused of something you didn't do. Uh, but anyway, uh, what I'm trying to say is look at the significance. And then, y'all, he was born of a virgin. So, in other words, I just want to point that distinct difference in whether you're comparing him to a man, an earthly man, and this man, Christ Jesus, and our gift. This gift is a special gift. This gift is unique than any person. And no matter what other faith you have, or prophets, or whatever, none of them carry this type of testimony. Uh, in this way all right so anyway i know i got a little more here and i know i got to come out of here and so i'm just talking to you today about uh receiving christ as a good uh like a child all right and so uh you don't have to go there just go to isaiah 9 6 you'll see that it talk about until us is given a child is born not giving us an adult then sinners uh, uh, nothing like that god he sent us uh, jesus in the form of a child just like we come through uh to be able to be a great example for us and so you'll go there and read isaiah 9 6 and 7 and you you can read some of that and i'm sure for christmas they're gonna uh, use them as topics and so i just want you guys to put in your spirit and remember jesus is the unspeakable inexpressible gift it gives you a reason to have joy it gives you a reason uh, today on this day no matter what's going on i don't care who the president is or what they claim they're going to do uh, your joy should ought not be wrapped up in that that's something we deal with but our life as believers uh it, it, we are not, we're from a different kingdom <laughs> uh, god and uh, jesus didn't have another election <laughs> it's already established and we are we, we've been grafted in the kingdom and that's where our government is and even the scriptures that i just mentioned would talk about him carrying this thing all right and so anyway uh matthew chapter 18 10 when you go there and read it we're probably gonna come back to that uh, maybe this maybe not this week because i still got patience to deal with uh but we're gonna talk about these little ones you'll go there to matthew chapter 18 10 and you'll see references to little ones little ones little ones don't do this uh talk about their angels and uh we you know you wonder how the children some of them being um abused uh killed taken uh lost right and you say how can god let this happen all these things there's a lot you can't really make that claim against god without knowledge and you got to understand and know that every child isn't god's and if you reject or, re or deny your child from developing this relationship he or she too could become as such uh as this so I just want to encourage you today. I want y'all to be happy today, not just for the uh, football game, but be happy if you're a believer that you actually uh, accepted the gift in Christ Jesus. All right. Amen, amen. As usual, what a wonderful word from our minister. Um, accepting the gift. Amen. Uh, that's a gift that uh, no one should be refusing. Amen. So once again, thank you, Minister, for such a wonderful word this morning. Uh, again, thank you for joining us on today. Uh, I know there's, like I said, places that you could uh, uh, think about being, but we appreciate you joining us here at On Faith, Faith Ministries. Um, I just want to say a quick um, shout out, I guess, to my oldest daughter who got engaged on her birthday. 
on the uh, 6th of November. So we just pray for health and strength and a you know, wonderful marriage. And um, we don't know the date that she's getting married yet, but I just want to go ahead and congratulate her and her uh, a new, uh, I guess, uh, fiance <laughs> um, today. So as we go forth, uh, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for your gift. We thank you for all that you do for us, Lord. Lord, without you, Lord, uh, there's, with, with you, Lord, there's just joy each and every time we think of you, Lord. Every time that we praise and worship your name, Lord, it's just, it's, it's just something that overcomes us, Lord. Lord, as we move throughout our day and throughout our week, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that each and every one of us that's right here and those who are listening, Lord, is just filled with your spirit, Lord, and show each and every one, and show others, Lord, uh, of how knowing you could just be a joyful thing uh, with your presence being in their lives, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I want to thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. And as we uh, go forward, once again, I always encourage you to invite someone, your friends, your neighbors, um, whoever you think or believe uh, could use this word uh, on the Sundays. We just ask that you invite them to join us and listen and be fulfilled. Amen. And, uh, as we like to say here in our Unfeigned Faith Ministries, until next time, hold, hold on, on to, to your, your faith. faith. Amen. 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 Only reason I have concerns, I didn't see my, I see it now, but until then, I didn't see my um, green and blue. But we were telling you it was good. Yeah, I know. Because we could hear you.